Elandian drones versus Monsteras. You know, I've been thinking for a while that these are the same plant. I was thinking that Monstera is actually a Philandian drone, and apparently it's not. And today I will be telling you the difference between these two plants, and maybe you can find something interesting for you as well. So, um, as I said, Monsteras and uh, Philandian drones are not the same plants, they are from the same family. But they are totally different and monsteras are from tropical rainforest of central and south america while philandian drones are from tropical and subtropical regions of america we can see the difference in the size monsteras can be quite big and dramatic with large very large leaves that look like swiss cheese because they have these fenestrations and splits no, I'm hungry. <laughs> and while the Philandian drones look more like heart shaped, hardy leaves, uh, there are a lot of benefits for the humans from these plants. And they are both great air purification systems. Um, Monstera specifically can absorb airborne toxins and then um, release oxygen. The price differs in between these plants. As I said, Monstera are more imposing larger leaves more dramatic and can be more expensive while these plants usually you don't people don't find them in this size at the stores they find them a lot smaller can be cheaper and because they are smaller and compact but also depends on the store and depends on how old is the plant and what type of monstera or philandian drone it is um, another great great thing about this plant and help for uh, human beings is that they have a positive impact on mental health and both plants are very very helpful in two different direc directions and um, well, you know that studies show that plants are very very healthy and useful for us for the air for the mood for everything so monsteras are known to be calming and soothing so they calm you down and soothe you when you're stressed and Philandian drones are known to boost creativity and inspire joy. I can see my husband right now laughing and saying with the amount of monsters and Philandian drones in our house that I have, uh, I should be the happiest and calmer and most creative person. <laughs> I don't know about all of that, but I definitely need to work on being calmer. But I'll tell you that each time I come from work and I'm stressed and maybe sad, um, I have my plants and I spend a lot more time with them in those days than in regular days. So caring for these plants are about the same. You need to water them on schedule. They need bright and direct light and they need support as well. Um, but uh, Masteris need a little more humidity and they need, they need less fertilizer and they need a well-draining soil. You have to add in their perlite, vermiculite, and peat moss to make sure that it actually drains very well. And this plant, I bought it this way, and it's going to need to be repotted because I don't like how dense the soil is. And I don't like that it has all this stuff. Oh, you saw my notes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I don't like uh, this stuff on top because it's hard to say if your soil is actually dry or not with your fingers and uh, you know monsteras need a slightly more acidic soil for their leaves so now you can see me basically looking on amazon for one of those acidic acidic measurements or whatever tool is for the soil so i can make sure that my monsteras grow tall and nice and beautiful and these plants can be damaged if you overwater, underwater, or if you actually uh, put them on direct sunlight. Look how beautiful they are. And they suffer from uh, a lot of pests, and those are like mealybugs, spider mites, white flies, aphids, and all uh, uh, different other ones, like the black ones. And oh my God, I saw even those. I have lots of uh, feet 
<laughs> crawling out of the pots so it does have a lot of um, pests that likes it so you might want to check it and make sure that if you find anything you clean it and you use a good pesticide that is not harmful for, for you or your family and it's not harmful for your plants um, for pots you should choose for monsters wider pots because you can see they like to spread they're not necessarily growing in a like one straight vine they like to be like you know going around and i don't know what this one is doing here it's split completely in half and Finlandian drones are like smaller pots and uh, they like uh, to be uh, root bounded so um, right now i'm thinking of all the plants that need to be <laughs> repotted and choosing a different pot we're actually looking for a pot for this large monstera and now if before i was looking for something taller now i'm looking i'll be looking for something wider moss pole so you can see this uh, monster here doesn't have moss pole i bought it this way and i don't want to touch it until i actually repot it and then i'll add the moss pole but monsteras need moss pole because they are very heavy if you actually touch this leaf it's like super super really really heavy and this one and you can see that it uh, has this large aerial roots that are, are like so hard that actually help it to stabilize itself these aerial roots are actually super big like it goes around the plant and uh, for philandian drones you can use small uh, mouse poles uh, they basically can stand on its own but here you can see that this one is getting heavy and it's going on the side and this one after we had the new leaves it kind of goes on the side so i only need to add um, mass poles to these guys too i don't know what it's doing look it went sideways and then it has a plant a new leaf coming from there and not from here and not from the top so it's like really strange and amazing to look at these plants you it's really 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 amazing That was a lot of talking <laughs> so uh, you make you need to make sure that your moss pole is actually planted very well because for me i have seen how my monsteras actually pulled the moss pole completely out or pulled it on the side so you make sure that it's actually really really um good and stable uh, i'm not sure if you want to use ladders like this i i'm not sure what the previous owner tried to do i think they were thinking to put the plant for here and then get it out for here and didn't realize that these are quite some big leaves and they won't fit in here so i wouldn't use a ladder i would use a moss pole and for this one probably we'll need like a tree <laughs> a huge huge moss pole but we'll have to figure out something because as it grows and grows it actually goes and goes sideways more and more uh, how to propagate these plants Propagation is very easy. You usually need to take a cut that has a node and a couple of leaves and you just put it in water for both plants, same thing. You need to make sure, let me see, that you actually have a node with some leaves and put it in water or maybe perlite or moss, whatever you use to propagate your plants. I'm not sure. I used, I did propagate monsteras and water and they were successful. Uh, there is also air layering. I never tried it, but I'll tell you what it says. It's basically you take some moss, wet moss, you put it around the node and you let your plant to actually develop roots and then you cut it and plant it. I feel like that's very messy and ugly also for the plant, but I am thinking that people who actually sell multiple plants and they want to do it instead of cutting and having it all over the place when water they probably do that and then once the root developed they just cut it and plant and ship or whatever they are doing both plants grow very slow very slow um masters typically take five years to develop to mature size uh, so like this one is very small you can see 
it's very small so it's not quite mature and I really want to see how big it's gonna get I'm not sure how old is this big one uh, the owner couldn't tell me too much about it she just sold it to me so I'm not sure how big it is but I hope it's not in its prime years I hope we're gonna get bigger than this uh, so aerial fact uh, aerial facts no aerial roots facts that was fun for me to search it up because you can see that on Finlandian drones they are like big, uh, thin like this very thin but on monsteras they usually are pretty thick they're like they look like trees they're like humongous and um, they serve two different purposes you won't believe it i thought they're all the same but for philandian drones they actually use them to um, take the humidity and moisture out of the air and help the plant grow while monsters use it prim primarily for support they i'm not sure if they take any moisture out of the air but they mostly need it for support because you can see that this is a pretty heavy uh, stem and you actually it's holding on uh, its aerial roots um, you can use both in both plants aerial roots to propagate new plants or to grow new plants and same you just put some moss around it and wait for it to oh, sorry my phone died <laughs> uh, i never tried to actually create new plants from aerial roots that's something interesting to see and try and maybe one day i will try and share that with you but if you have please let me know in the comments um, this is basically a short video that i have spent two hours investigating and looking for to share with you i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was helpful please leave some comments some love share and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next video thank you